Alright, so in this one, I'm actually going to still be a nootropics person, but today I'm also a weed tuber for a day, so maybe when I get bigger I can do a thing with Jolioli or something. In this one, we're gonna smoke a bowl, and then we're gonna do some Nupept, and then we're gonna do some C-Max, and then we're gonna do a dab. But, no, really, today, uh, we're going to just talk about, um, cannabis as a nootropic, and then we're going, uh, to, well, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So, getting right into it, um, the major issue with using cannabis as a nootropic, uh, we, you know, we're no, we know what it's good for. It's good for abstract thought, it's good for creativity, that sort of thing. But, it has this obvious temporary memory impairment, so that's really a bottleneck to how well you can use it. So, I'm going to talk uh, first and most importantly about how to mitigate those problems. So, getting right into it. Number one, uh, the memory impairment is caused by a, an inflammatory process in the frontal lobes. So uh, apparently if you take aspirin, it helps with that and it leaves the rest of your high intact. Now I've never personally tried this because it's just kind of an inconvenience. You know, when you want to fire it up, that's just what you want to do. You don't want to have to wait for aspirin to kick in and stuff. But. If you're serious about using this as a cognitive enhancer slash nootropic, then that's something that you might want to consider. Uh, so, let's see what... Oh, and then another strategy would be to try to stack it with some sort of other nootropic that is good for memory. So, with aspirin, you'd kind of get more to the root of the problem. Um, talking here about maybe just directly boosting memory to kind of uh, deal with it a little bit better. Uh, you might, and this is kind of a strategy that I use, uh, so the third thing you want to do here is, um, it, it's nothing fancy really, it's just instead of trying to remember everything uh, when you're high, you just basically, it's kind of like a synopsis, you know, just two or three main takeaways from your little high, you know, get high and go for a walk in the woods or something and just come back with uh, maybe two or three big ideas that, you've, that you really think you want to explore when you're in more, a more sober state of mind. So that's one thing. Four, you can um, practice recording in various ways. So this could be writing it down, it could be drawing, it could be like a, a video or an audio recording. And you just want to experiment with these to see what's best. I personally um, find that obviously, you know, again, the reading and writing is one of those things that's kind of impaired, but it's kind of like a trade off. If you want, you can just try to you just get something down to jog your memory when you're sober and you're looking back on it. Like what this grand thought was that you had when you were stoned. And, um,. So you can do that. It is a pain. I mean, any, any of these recording methods are a pain because you interrupt your flow of thought, but, you, you know, it's, like I said, it's a trade-off. Uh, so do that. Or this is one that actually might not be so much of a flow interrupt there, but uh, the drawing uh, to record it down. You can do that uh, because I think, you know, like, again, your, your, your visual and your, like, artistic skills are sort of enhanced maybe when you're high, so that actually might be the best bet. And then of course, uh, you know, using a video camera or just, you know, like your phone if it has an audio recording feature. Uh, you can try those too. That's pretty accessible too because you usually have your cell phone on you all the time. So it's easy to just pick it up and sort of like talk into it. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and then the final strategy for dealing with this memory issue uh, is a little bit different. It's kind of the reverse. It's kind of to use it as a form of mental resistance training. So what you would actually do is instead of focusing on the things that it enhances, you actually try to do the things that you're impaired at. Reading and writing, for example. The theory being that, you know, you, you do it, if you can get good at doing it when you're high, it's like you'll be like supercharged at doing it when you're sober. So 
something to experiment with. I've experimented with it a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been quantitative enough to tell you how much it actually works, but it's something you might want to toy with. And then, so that's it for the memory issues. There's a few things. I did want to touch on uh, coffee because I think coffee is a particularly good thing to stack with cannabis, and in particular if you're using it as a nootropic or a cognitive enhancer, which is what we're talking about right now. So, you know, it, it imbues it with more of a what you would traditionally think of as a sativa like quality. It makes a, it does help you to just think more with it and be creative. And um, also, you might want to experiment with the timing of the coffee because I think, you know, there, a lot of times, you know, when, when I'm coming off of a high, there's kind of like this groggy in between where you're not like high, but you're not back to normal. And it, so the, I think the coffee is really good at that time. It kind of like slingshots you and gives you like this good rebound effect. Makes you really feel particularly on top of things. It, it synergizes well with the weight at that point in the, in, you know, like in your, in your, like I guess, come down. So there's coffee, and then um, another issue is um, balance. I wanted to point out that no matter how much you think you're you're using cannabis in a constructive way, it's important to remember that it. You can't be using it all the time. Even the quality of the thoughts that you have, apart, aside from actually whether or not you're putting them in, into practice or doing any, anything with it, is the issue of the quality of those thoughts are not going to be so good if all you're doing is smoking weed in your free time. you got to go out and have other sorts of experiences. And then, uh, I guess it's kind of like... Um, you know, in the psychedelic community, I know there used to be like a saying, you can't trip on shit, and I guess uh, the same kind of thing goes for, um, you know, anything, like, you know, just if you're just smoking weed, too, that, and that level, I mean, if, if you're if you're just smoking weed all day, then it's not going to help you. you got to go out and have other experiences and go back and, you know, think about your, your day and smoke down and... It will be a lot more constructive that way. So you got to remember to keep the balance in order to use this as a good nootropic and cognitive enhancer. And the very final point I wanted to make about this was that you don't want to try too hard. I just find in my experience that when you tr sit down and you smoke with the intention of doing something really creative, you're trying too hard, it doesn't work. I think you know really uh, a good way to maybe understand what's going on with uh, cannabis and its effect on creativity and abstract thought is that it just sort of relaxes your mind, allows you to make connections. And if you're trying too hard, I, I think that it, it kind of goes against that and it just doesn't seem to work. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Don't try too hard to like, to get something from it. So, uh, you know, uh, the, that's pretty much it. Uh, for uh, using cannabis as a nootropic, and we didn't even touch CBD oil. That's probably something that is going to have to be addressed all on its own. But uh, you know, I'll get around to that. I think at some point. So, till then, um, have fun and uh, thanks for watching.